Dr. Leslie Phillips, Senior Epidemiologist for SEIU 775 Benefits Group. I'm joined today by Dr. Renee Kusler, a family medicine specialist who has been treating patients throughout the pandemic. We're here to answer your questions about COVID-19 and the vaccine. If you have questions, please feel free to post them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. A lot has changed since our last update. Vaccines are widely available and mandated for many. New variants have appeared across the globe and we're sure you have some questions. Plus, we have some new resources we'd like to share. All of this information is current as of November, 2021, and this video is intended for in-home caregivers in Washington State. Dr. Kusler, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with us about COVID-19. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, hi, Leslie. Thank you so much. My name is Dr. Renee Kusler, and I am a family medicine physician. So I've been treating patients for over 20 years. Um, from infants all the way up to geriatrics. Um, I have a lot of experience caring for women during their pregnancy as well, um, taking care of them during pregnancy, birth, um, taking care of their newborns. And I also have a master's degree in public health and I study tropical medicine and infectious disease. So I've worked with a lot of different infectious diseases all around the globe throughout the years. Um, most recently, I have been working with COVID so since the pandemic started, I've been working for um, a consulting group called Anvil Group, and I work with a group of um, COVID consultants helping businesses get back to work safely. So dealing with a lot of protocols, trying to keep people safe and keep people from becoming infected. And more recently, um, helping people understand the COVID-19 vaccine, which is what we're here to talk about today. Thanks so much. COVID-19 has presented unique challenges for caregivers during this time, and as caregivers, your job has always been important, and that's especially true over these past two years. Your safety is important and a top priority for all of us at SEIU 775 Benefits Group. We continue working hard to get you the resources that you need the most, and we'd like to spend today's Facebook event addressing any concerns about COVID vaccines. For our part, we're excited to have vaccines that are safe and effective. And we want to hear about and discuss any concerns you might have. If you have questions, please feel free to comment them and we'll do our best to answer them. I'm going to start with some questions that came to us before the webinar in order to um, have them be answered during this event. And the first one, I think is really interesting. Dr. Kusler, in my role as an epidemiologist, I've had the privilege of hearing from caregivers and the concerns they have about vaccines. And many caregivers have expressed concerns that their specific health circumstances might make the vaccine unsafe for them. An example of this is concerns about being vaccinated while pregnant or while trying to get pregnant. I wonder what you would say to these caregivers. Yeah, that is a very good question. It's it's very important during pregnancy, especially to be very careful about what you put into your body, <laughs> what you eat, what you drink, what medicines you take, uh, what vaccines you get. So I think that's a very, very important question. And the great thing about this particular vaccine is that it has been shown to be safe in pregnancy. It's been shown to be safe during breastfeeding and, and also for women who are trying to get pregnant. So we are definitely recommending the vaccine for all of those, those three different cases. Um, in particular, in women who are pregnant, um, becoming infected with COVID-19 can be very problematic for the pregnancy. Um, it can cause um, miscarriages. It can cause some malformations. Um, women have had very, very difficult deliveries. Um, so it can really cause a lot of problems for the mom and or the baby if you become infected with COVID-19. So we really, to be able to protect the mom, protect the baby, have the safest pregnancy possible, we really do recommend getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, another question, Leslie, that I've heard from, from some of my own patients is, you know, if I get the COVID vaccine when I'm pregnant, can my baby get COVID? Or if I take the vaccine when I'm breastfeeding, is my baby going to get COVID? And the answer to that is no. Um, the vaccine does not contain any live COVID virus. It's just comprised of little bits and pieces <laughs> of the COVID-19 vaccine so that your body can recognize it and, and build up immunity. 
And so there's no possible way for you to actually get a COVID infection from the COVID vaccine. It's simply there to help your body build immunity. Okay, so it's not going to cause an infection in your baby. Um, if you take it during pregnancy, it's not going to cause an infection in your baby during breastfeeding. Um, one of the other things that I've had some discussions with patients about is for women who are trying to get pregnant, um, there are rumors out there that it may cause infertility. And we haven't seen any, any evidence of that. We haven't seen any women um, who have gotten the vaccine and then, you know, so far had a lot of issues with trying to get pregnant. There have been a lot of women who have had the vaccine and gotten pregnant after the vaccine. Um, so we definitely know that, you know, women are able to get pregnant after being vaccinated. Um, there is one side effect um, of the vaccine that we are seeing, and some women have a more irregular um, menstrual cycle. So their period might be a little more irregular, might be a little bit heavier, um, just some changes in that way over a few months after the vaccine. And that's actually not very surprising. Um, a lot of women do experience that in if their body is under a lot of stress, if they've been very, very ill. Um, so getting the COVID vaccine does cause your body to you know, create immunity to COVID-19. Um, and it, that may or may not affect your hormones just a little bit. And that can, you know, affect your period, your menstrual cycle. And for most women that it has gone back to normal, they've gone to have normal menstrual cycles. And as I said before, many women have gone on to become pregnant after the vaccine. Um, so I would say that definitely the safest thing for a mom, um, for her future pregnancy, for her current pregnancy, um, for her breastfeeding baby, <laughs> all those situations, really the safest thing is, is to be vaccinated. Thanks so much. That's so reassuring and informative. I'd like to shift a little and talk about boosters because we're hearing a lot about boosters. I wonder if you could talk about why boosters are needed. Yeah, boosters are really, really important right now. Um, one of, the, one of the downsides of vaccines against viruses is that oftentimes our immunity to the virus will go away over time. And we're seeing that with COVID. And that's something that, that we did expect to see. Um, and so, you know, some people are only, you know, immune for a year, some people six months, some people longer or shorter. It depends on the person. Um, but we are seeing a lot of people who were vaccinated back in January, February, who their, their immunity is waning. They're not, they're not as immune to COVID as they were. And so in order to protect them better from the COVID-19 uh, infection, we are recommending boosters. Now there are specific people that we highly, highly recommend the booster for. Um, in particular, people who have ever had any problems with their immune system. So anybody who has ever had cancer, um, anybody who has a, a rheumatologic disease, anything like lupus, um, rheumatoid arthritis, things like that, where your, your immune system doesn't work quite normally. Um, another group of patients similar to that is a transplant patient. So if someone's had a kidney transplant or a liver transplant, any kind of transplant, they're usually on medications to kind of decrease their body's immune response to that transplant. So someone, if someone's immune response is not functioning quite like normal, they're probably not going to build the immunity to the COVID um, infection to the COVID virus. So a lot of those people, even after, you know, their first two shots, let's say they got a Pfizer or Moderna or the Johnson & Johnson one shot, oftentimes we don't see the immunity that we would like to see in them. And so we highly recommend a booster um, because we are seeing people get immunity after that third shot. So that's really important for anybody who has any kind of immune issues. Um, the other populations that we highly recommend it in our, our elderly population, you know, especially anyone over 65, anyone who has chronic medical illness, um, anybody with hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, um, asthma, any, any kind of lung disease, especially um, COVID-19 is very hard on people who have any kind of lung problems. And so we really recommend um, the booster vaccine in, in people who have any underlying medical conditions that will really protect them a lot better. Thanks so much. Dr. Kuzler, we just got a question in the chat. I'm going to read it and talk a little bit to it. It's very um, relevant to what you were just talking about. And the question is, um, I have my vaccine shots. Is a booster required? And I will say that in addition to all the populations Dr. Kuzler just talked about, there are some others that are being recommended for boosters, and they have to do with occupational risk. And all of you as caregivers are at occupational risk 
and therefore by the nature of your work qualify for a booster. And mm -hmm. I think to think about it a little bit further about, you know, do I need my booster now? Um, it depends if you are six months past your last dose of a two dose vaccine like the Pfizer or the Moderna, then now would be the time. And if you're two months past um, a vaccine, the J and J one dose, Johnson and Johnson one dose vaccine, now would be the time for that as well. Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. Um, and thanks for addressing that, Leslie. Another factor to consider is, is the time of year. We're heading into Thanksgiving next week. <laughs> we have Christmas coming up, then we have New Year's. Um, last year at this time, we had huge, huge surges in, in COVID-19 infections, and we're expecting some surges this year. Um, we're expecting those surges primarily in the unvaccinated population. Um, so if you are vaccinated, it's much less likely that you'll get COVID-19. However, if you were vaccinated early in the year, you know, or more than six months ago, as, as Leslie pointed out, for the Moderna or Pfizer, we do recommend getting that booster. Um, as caregivers, you guys are at particular risk because you're going into people's homes. You're, you're close to people, you're sharing their air, <laughs> you know, you're in their home. And especially if they are celebrating the holidays or they're having family and friends over, um, it just puts you at a lot, a lot higher risk for becoming infected with COVID-19. So because of your jobs and because of your exposure, yeah, I would definitely recommend a booster for all of you. We have a question that I think is related that I'll talk a little bit about, which is, does natural immunity provide better protection than the vaccine? Why would I get the vaccine when I have natural immunity? I had COVID as well as my family and client, and we all beat it without issues. First of all, that's fantastic news. I'm so glad that you recovered from COVID-19. And then to your question, is natural immunity better? Um, not necessarily better, just different. There are some studies that suggest natural immunity may be stronger. Others suggest that vaccine is stronger, but they both have one thing in common, and that is that both natural immunity, in other words, immunity you got from being infected with um, COVID-19 and vaccine-induced immunity wane over time. Neither can provide lifelong immunity. And so over time, somebody who is vaccinated will eventually need boosters, and that um, is now for many people. And people who have had a natural infection will need to get a booster, ideally through a vaccine and not through getting sick. So since we're not sure how long natural immunity lasts, getting vaccinated, even if you have been infected, is a good idea. And another question we received uh, about vaccines and um, I think that this would be a great one for you, Dr. Kusla, which is just, why couldn't we get um, one shot? Uh, let me read it. Why couldn't they just simply develop a single dose shot that actually stops everyone from testing positive and doesn't allow anyone to transmit it to anyone else? That's what we were all duped into thinking they were working on. And I would say, oh, it would be so great to have this. It's not what we have. And Dr. Kusla, I wonder if you could comment a bit on this. Yeah, I, I also wish that we were able to have the vaccine that you described. Um, it would be wonderful. Unfortunately, we don't have that technology right now. Um, the technology we do have, though, is pretty fantastic. Um, the COVID-19 vaccine was made very quickly because we already had the technology needed to make this type of vaccine, which is, which is really great. It wasn't something brand new that has never been done before. Um, and I think that sometimes in the media, it was a little bit confusing using while the vaccine was coming out, people thought that this was a completely new vaccine that they were inventing from nothing. And, and that's not true. There, there was a lot of science, you know, going into creating this vaccine and um, having to do uh, two shots, you know, with the Moderna and the Pfizer is not, is not unheard of in the vaccine world. Um, it's, it's actually quite common to have to do multiple injections. Um, things like hepatitis B, you actually have to do three <laughs> to build to build immunity. So there are, you know, a lot of a lot of um, vaccines that that we're familiar with that need, you know, two and even sometimes three to be able to build up that immunity. So that's a pretty that's a pretty normal thing, and um, you know, it's as Leslie had said that, you know the immunity wanes over time so that, you know, it's not lifelong immunity, whether you get vaccinated or you have COVID infection, 
you'll be immune for a while. <laughs> you'll be safe for a while, but not forever. And that's also something that we've seen with many, many diseases, um, people having to get booster shots, um, things like influenza, you have to get the booster shot every year, um, things like tetanus every 10 years, you know, and some people every five years, you need a booster for that. So a lot of these vaccines don't provide lifelong immunity um, and your body needs that booster to kind of revive those, that immune process to say, oh yeah, I do recognize this, Next time I see it, I'm gonna fight it off really quickly. And that's what we want. We want your body to be able to fight off that infection really quickly. So um, Leslie and I work with a whole group of, of doctors and virologists and <laughs> some real experts in the field um, that have, have dealt with the vaccine for many years. And um, their, their comments have been very encouraging and the fact that um, the way that it was developed, you know, the science that it's uh, based on is, is very sound and um, the vaccine is very effective. And, and the boosters are, are just gonna become a part of life for us. Thanks so much. I like this next question. Uh, it speaks to the epidemiologist in me. And the question is, I don't feel comfortable with mixing and maxing, matching vaccine shots. Has there been enough research on this? Um, I, I hear you. I don't feel comfortable mixing and matching my wardrobe, which is why I wear solid colors. And I can understand that something like a vaccine has a lot more um, impact on your life. And what I will say is that there have been quite a few studies on mixing and matching vaccines. So what that might mean is maybe you got a Moderna when you were vaccinated and for your booster, you got a Pfizer or vice versa or Johnson and Johnson and then Moderna. Um, and some countries like Canada actually rolled this out in their initial vaccination campaign due to supply. But that said, there is absolutely no need to do this. If you like the vaccine you got originally and are getting a booster, it is absolutely fine to search for and get that vaccine again. Another great question we have, and this one, Dr. Kusler, I'm gonna hand to you, which is why is the benefits group encouraging vaccines? And I imagine that the reasons are the same reasons that you discuss with your patients every day. And I wonder if you could talk about that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And, and especially for this, this particular group of people as caregivers, as I mentioned before, you're at particular risk by, by going into people's homes, by dealing with people face to face. Um, we really want you to stay healthy and be able to continue with your work and not bring the virus home, you know, to your friends and your family. Um, so I think that, you know, encouraging you to be to be vaccinated is really just encouraging you to stay, stay as healthy as you possibly can and to prevent, you know, prevent harm. Um, and I'm, you know, I recommend the vaccine to all of my patients, um, to all my family, all my friends, everybody. <laughs> I say COVID-19 for some people is a very mild illness, but for many people, it is not. Uh, for many people, it is very severe. Um, it, can end in death um, or it can end in long-term COVID effects, um, which can be very just devastating to someone's life. So yeah, I would definitely recommend the COVID-19 vaccine just to, for your own health and safety and the, the health and safety of your family and friends. That's a perfect segue when you were talking about long-term effects to our next question, um, which is there's no research on the long-term ramifications from the COVID-19 vaccines. Is mm -hmm. it safe? And, you know, I'll, I'll speak to this. It, it depends on, you know, how you define long-term with the clinical trials we're coming up on um, years, not weeks or months or days. But I'll also say that in our experience that um, if vaccines are going to cause adverse events, it almost always happens within the six weeks following those vaccine doses. And we have lots of data on that, hundreds of millions of doses um, in which people have, um, been followed for over time. And I think the other thing is exactly what you were talking about, Dr. Kusler, is that um, people, um, we know what the long-term ramifications of COVID might be in some populations. Um, and, and they mean that many people don't clear this virus after having an illness. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I understand the, the concern of, you know, what would this COVID vaccine do to me in five years or 10 years? Um, and the five year, 10 year, 20 year, that we don't know. But we do know over the, you know, in the recent history so far, people have not had um, serious side effects from it. The side effects 
or not side effects, but the consequences of COVID-19 infection are much, much worse than from the vaccine. Um, particularly, as I, as I just mentioned before, the long-term effects of COVID, I have so many patients that really have had so many problems with their lungs. Um, even people who don't have asthma, who don't have any lung issues, COVID really attacks your lungs, causes a lot of scarring afterwards. And I have patients who are, you know, six months after a year, year and a half after having COVID, and they're still using an asthma inhaler just to walk around the block. I mean, they can't, they can't exercise, they can't play with their children or their grandchildren. They're just constantly out of breath. It really, really affects their lives. Um, we've had a lot of other people who have um, who have memory issues, um, cognitive, you know, mental issues after having COVID-19. Um, they have a lot of memory problems and they feel kind of foggy in their head for weeks and months after having COVID. And a lot, there are a lot, a lot of side effects from COVID-19 infection. And we haven't seen those types of side effects from the COVID-19 vaccine. So in that sense, we definitely say that the COVID-19 vaccine is much safer <laughs> for you than actually getting COVID-19. That's great. I think this last question here is, is such a nice one and a, a way to pull it all together, which is I'm not sick and have not gotten sick. Why would I get the vaccine? Yeah, that's a great question. And congratulations on not getting sick during this pandemic. That is fantastic. And the reason I would say that you should get the vaccine is to continue to stay healthy. You know, you've been healthy, you've been well, you haven't been sick. But we're, as I said before, we're coming up on the holidays. Um, people are gonna be gathering with their families uh, for Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, there are gonna be some spikes in infection rates. And most of those new COVID infections that we'll see over the holidays will be in unvaccinated people. Um, you know, vaccinated people can still get COVID, but it's usually a very mild case and they're not as likely to pass it on. But for people who are unvaccinated, you just don't have that protection. And so we really recommend, especially at this time of year, if you haven't been vaccinated, go ahead and get vaccinated and stay healthy, <laughs> stay well through the holidays and, you know, be able to enjoy, you know, your friends and your family and be able to continue with your work. Thanks to everyone for your interest in these COVID-19 updates. And thank you especially, Dr. Kusler, for being here and for your wonderful contributions to this topic of conversation. Sure, thank you're you. welcome. It, yeah, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to talk with you all. And I hope that that helps to ease some, some questions and some concerns in your mind. And if you do have more questions, you know, feel free to talk to your physician, um, go to the CBC website. I think Leslie... Um, and the organization is going to post some, some more resources for you guys so that you can definitely, you know, read up, do some research um, using these links and, and really make the best decision for your own health. Absolutely. It can feel scary to get a new vaccine, especially one for which there has been so much misinformation. But please know that hundreds of millions of people have had these vaccines. And when it comes to Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, there have been no deaths. And with the Johnson & Johnson vaccines, there have been a few deaths out of millions of doses. It's accurate to say that more people die taking aspirin, taking selfies, or taking hot air balloon, balloon rides than of being vaccinated for COVID-19. In September of this year, with the Delta variant spreading, COVID-19 took more lives than cancer. It took more lives than car accidents, diabetes, and stroke combined. So if you hear about people claiming they know someone, who died or experienced an extreme health impact from the COVID-19 vaccine, please be sure to ask more. Ask if it was published in a medical journal or carried in the news. Ask who the person was, etc. Verify the facts. In doing so, you will learn how these falsehoods fall apart with scrutiny and how incredibly safe these COVID-19 vaccines are. Thank you again for the work you're doing during this pandemic. We're working hard to make sure you have the most accurate information and resources available to you. Please continue visiting our website, myseiubenefits.org for the most up-to-date information. We'd also like to take a minute to remind you of some of the best places other than our website to go for information. These include the Washington State Department of Health, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and John Hopkins University. Thank you so much for watching.